All right, so there's no question the routes that led to the L.A. Sparks ouster by Connecticut in the WNBA semifinals last month were eye-opening. It was a surprise to see them swept. It was compounded by Candace Parker's benching in the series' final game three. Now today, our Ramona Shelburne reported that several Sparks players and league sources told her there was more to it than just Parker's performance, that they believe coach Derek Fisher's decision to pull Parker and several of their other starters was premeditated and influenced by a speech given by GM Penny Toller after their loss in game two. Parker was limited to just three points in that game. And after that game, Toller entered the Sparks locker room and challenged the team with an obscenity-laced speech that also included several racial epithets, the sources said. One player told Ramona, quote, you can't say that in 2019. Toller, who is African-American, did not dispute using the N-word, but she stressed she never directed it at her players. In a statement, Toller told Shelburne, quote, by no means did I call my players the N-word. I'm not saying that I couldn't have used it in a context, but it wasn't directed at any of my players. It is unfortunate I use that word. I shouldn't, nobody should. I'm not here to defend word by word what I said. I know some of the words that I'm being accused of are embellished. Did I give a speech that I hope would help get our team going? Yes. And now here is WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert, who chimed in on this earlier today on Outside the Lines. I've heard about this. We'll be looking into it as a league. Um, we understand the heat of the moment and that the Sparks lost in the semifinals, and, but we don't condone that kind of language, and we'll be reviewing it over the next couple of days. So, I mean, there's a lot to digest there. And I want to set aside Candace Parker's playing time and, and all of those internal dynamics with Derek Fisher. Um, Penny Toller was a WNBA player. She actually scored the first point in WNBA history as a member of the Sparks. She's been the GM there for 20 years. I don't feel personally qualified to say whether she should or shouldn't be using that kind of language. So I want to open it up to you guys who I think are much more qualified to discuss this. Yeah, it's, it's a obviously very complicated word with a, a long, complicated history. We, clearly there's a different context when black people use it as opposed to someone who's not black using it. Uh, I would say that probably not professional to use that word in a professional environment, but then again, <laughs> we know that in locker rooms, other words that are not professional are used all the time, right? And one of the words in the story is she called the players MFers. I'm sorry, if you've been in an NBA locker room, you might have heard that word Eight billion times, sometimes endearing, sometimes demeaning, sometimes admiring, but you hear a lot of bad language, is, is what I'm saying, particularly after a loss. Um, I, I, I can't speak for the players or what they felt absorbing that, that language. The one thing I would say is, generally you want to let your coaches handle the fiery speeches. You got a fi some fiery to say, you communicate that to the coach. You don't, the GM, the front office, does not enter the locker room and do that because there's a chain of command when it comes to this. I agree. I mean, that's why the GM should just go out and get the groceries <laughs> yeah. and let there the coach go. sort of uh, cook it. And I mean, did you hear that kind of language directed toward no, you as a player? No. And again, I mean, like, it's not directed I, I've, toward I've you gotten some you. verbal abuse from, you know, childhood all the way up through my professional career, but not to that kind of verbiage. And in today's sports, you, you just can't use those kind of words. And, um, there's going to be some repercussions when you do. Yeah, I think that's interesting, right? Because we always say like, oh, back in the old days, they used to say everything. But if you say that no one said that even around you in all the locker rooms you were in, that says something to me. No, it wouldn't come from a, a, a coach. You know, right. It may be some verbiage between some, some players or something of, of that nature. And not to even say using the, the N word, there's always language that probably shouldn't be said. but. Things like that normally, you try to keep it in the locker room and you try to smash it there. Whether it was wrong or right that the GM said that, um, there should be some kind of fix it inside the locker room because it's really about the people who's in that circle and it's about the team. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, look, as I said, I know that for someone like me, there is never, ever an acceptable right. time, ever, period, the end, end of discussion. I understand also that I don't have, as you say, the history and the context that someone like you has. Right. And so it is more complicated. 
And I think, to your point, Scotty, if the players are telling Ramona, again, they did not put their names next to it, but I understand why they want to talk anonymously. It's your boss. Who, That's your who, boss. And it's unlike <laughs> the NBA where possibly... I make a lot much more money than right, my boss does. Exactly. In, in this sport, it's not quite I that I certainly way. trust Ramona Shelburne and her sourcing on this. And if the players came to her and said, this really bothered me, that's enough for me. To, yes. to me, the question is, if she hadn't used the N-word, but she'd use every other four-letter mm -hmm. word in the book, mm -hmm. I think they'd still be upset. Because, again, it's the context. The GM came in and cussed us out after a loss? <laughs> That's kind of weird. It's, it's different. We'll see how this story unfolds. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.